Can we really become immortal? This is a tough question to answer. First, let's just start with what the word immortal means. If you just Google the definition, it'll say like exempt from death, living forever, never dying or decaying. So if you're thinking of it in the sense that, hey, can you survive a plane crash where everything gets vaporized but you live? I don't think we'll ever become immortal in that sense. So let's alter the definition to where it's just like the ability to live forever. You know, granted that you don't get hit by a bus, you got enough food and water, that sort of thing. But even if you look at that definition, ability to live forever, that word forever is kind of tough to say. You know, some scientists say that 99% of the life that has existed on Earth has become extinct, and most of the biomass of that life actually did have the ability to live forever. And then you could argue, oh, the sun's gonna die, the universe will implode, so forever is kind of a tough word. You could even take it a step further. There's some trees that live a really, really, really long time. And some scientists speculate, yeah, as long as there's no earthquake, they got plenty of sunlight, water, they'll just keep on living forever. But others will argue, no, hold up, it actually does have a life cycle. It will die of old age eventually. It's just such a long, drawn-out life cycle. We're never going to see it because we're not around forever. And forever, at least for me and I would say most people, it's kind of an incomprehensible idea. So let's actually quantify something and make it tangible. Let's say ability to live a thousand years. It'll keep on living, but a thousand, that's comprehensible, that makes sense. Will we ever have the ability to live a thousand years? And even that word live gets a little tricky. Let me explain. So to live, meaning be alive, when I originally asked the question, can we become immortal? You know, I'm talking about homo sapiens, humans as a species, can we become immortal? So then you have to ask, okay, what if I can live to a thousand years, but I have artificial parts? Like maybe I have a machine kidney or liver or heart, or just go all the way and say the entire body. Is that really living forever? I bring this up for a couple reasons. One is that is actually one of the leading theories of how we'll achieve immortality is we'll become cyborgs and computers. And then is like, are we even human? Is that really alive? And then on the flip side of that, if you're okay with, oh yeah, I mean, if you have a fake kidney, not a big deal. It's just a little part of you. Like, where do you draw that line? Because if you break humans down into their smallest parts, like individual cells, what's mind boggling to me is we've already figured that out. We can take human cells and make them immortal or make them able to live a thousand years given they have the right environment and conditions. That's crazy to think about. And that's a whole nother video in and of itself you know, we kind of discovered this in 1951 when we had these human cells that were cancerous and they weren't dying. And now we kind of realize like that's what a lot of cancer is. And yes, we can actually take cells from you, take them to a lab, alter them, make them immortal. It's crazy. It makes you realize like, hmm, maybe we're actually a little bit closer to this than I thought. Maybe it is plausible. But there's a lot of stuff there and I'm going to come back to that later in the video. So to just make this simple, keep it clear, you know, black and white, we're just going to say ability for a whole human to live a thousand years. No artificial parts, none of that stuff going on. So here's something that's actually really crazy to think about. We are living longer. And a big reason is because of modern medicine and things that we're discovering and figuring out. If you look at life expectancy, we're living longer as time goes on. And this is a really awesome website where you can see from these graphs here, and I'll put the links in the description, that kind of eliminate that argument I've heard before where people say, well, we're actually not living longer, just infant mortality rates and younger people aren't dying as often. This website by far was the best in terms of data on life expectancy. You can see from some of these charts like this guy and this guy for a while, it was pretty stagnant and then it suddenly kind of took off and has drastically increased relative to how long humans have been around. A big reason for this is children used to die, almost half died before they reached adulthood and epidemiologists refer to this you know increase as the health transition now there is an argument that this is primarily about child mortality rates and as this website suggests if this were true we'd have different data and the data we have just shows that this is actually untrue and life expectancy has increased for all ages this chart here really shows that yes child mortality definitely created a big spike but even if you made it past childhood, if you were 40 years old, back in 1850, your life expectancy was here, whereas today, it's way up towards 80. So it's illustrating that life expectancy for all ages has increased over time. 
And what's really exciting about this is what's gonna happen in the future. And really for me, there's like three possible outcomes. One is it's linear, meaning that just let's say every 10 years that goes by, we learn how to make ourselves live one year longer. So if you do the math, every 10 years you get one year, in 10,000 years, we're gonna be able to figure out how to make ourselves live a thousand years longer and be able to become immortal based on the definition that I set up at the beginning. Now another thought is that yeah, we are figuring it out, we're having some luck with like antibiotics and other things, but it'll eventually plateau and we'll hit a point where we just can't live past that. I really just don't think that's gonna happen. And the third and most exciting is that it's actually exponential and that we're on this trajectory and it almost looks linear, but we're about to explode and go up and become immortal eventually. Now in real life, you know, nature, there's many things that are exponential. And when you're zoomed in on them and looking at them, they're not a perfect curve. They're kind of going like this. And I think our chart of life expectancy could easily be linear or possibly it is going like this, you know, all of a sudden we have a big breakout and then kind of this and then another big breakout. And when you back up and plot it over time, it's going up. So we might be able to figure out these things that have these huge, large jumps, like now everybody's living 20% longer because we figured this thing out. Or it's just a slow, long process with linear. Either way, eventually, given enough time, we should become immortal unless that third scenario where it flattens out. I'm really curious what you guys think. Let me know in the comments, do you think it's exponential, linear, or do you think we're just never gonna get there? Now this video series and the videos I have coming up are gonna be looking at all the different ways that we're working on becoming immortal. And there are surprisingly a lot. I already mentioned some like, you know, being a cyborg, replacing your kidneys, your heart. There's even another train of thought that's similar to that with nanobots. You actually have these little robots inside you. You keep your own heart and stuff, but they're repairing them. There's stuff like synolytics. Remember I said the cells divide until the telomeres get low, then they're programmed to die. Sometimes they don't die. Those cells stay in there. They're called zombie cells, but we can get rid of those has all these health benefits. Obviously, if you've seen my channel before in my experiments, I'm doing a human experiment on myself right now, taking NMN, which is actually trying to boost NAD, which David Sinclair is working on right now, thinking that's one of the keys. You know, there's so many things, CRISPR, the telomeres, metformin. And what's crazy is some of the most powerful people in the world, like these billionaires, they're really interested in this topic and they are throwing a ton of money at it. There's a lot of institutions out there, like the 2045 Initiative, the SENS Foundation, the Singularity University, there's just a lot of stuff going on in the world right now around this topic. So I'm gonna isolate one thing, make a video on it, and who knows, maybe that could be the thing. If we're going linear, it's just some little thing that we figured out, and that's why, hey, we're living a couple years longer because we figured out this little thing. Or maybe, just maybe, it's one of those things that give us that big jump, like I was saying, like, hey, we cracked this code, we figured it out, now humans can live twice as long, something crazy like that. What I do know, and what we do know is, medicine, technology, this information does actually grow exponential. So what has happened in the last five years with this aging stuff is unbelievable, it's crazy, versus what happened over the last 10 years. It's definitely moving a lot faster. I feel like almost every month now, there's almost some new topic or new breakthrough when it comes to this kind of thing. If this is something that interests you and you like this topic, go ahead and subscribe so you can see those future videos coming out. I'll end this video with the reason why this might actually be more complicated and harder than some will have you believe. And we might be a lot farther away from getting to immortality than we actually think. So the way that I like to think of it is all life on earth has instructions. And I'm specifically talking about DNA. You know, there's RNA as well, but all life has some sort of instructions that tell it what to do. And the human, the homo sapien instructions say die. It tells it to die. So if you were to think of it as a big, huge book, and it'd be a lot bigger than this book. I mean, we're talking a huge book. Within these pages, it says die, 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 all throughout the book. It's not like it just says it on one spot. That would be great, because we could just cross it out, say don't die, we're immortal. The reason I'm using this analogy is that's why it's actually so hard to figure out immortality, because maybe we do have one of these topics, like I'm talking about one of these coming up videos, and we're able to say, hey, let's change this to say not die. Now, a couple things could happen. One is, hey, we get a little bit more life expectancy. Now we're living a couple of years longer. I mean, we literally do this today with animals. Even with humans, we figure something out with like metformin where we can actually see like, hey, 
these people are living longer. We give mice or other animals a certain compound that affects their instructions and says, hey, don't die or don't die as fast. And then all of a sudden, hey, they're living 20% longer now. But on the flip side of that, a lot of times when you change the instructions or change something, there's an adverse side effect. And ironically, that can actually make you die quicker. The biggest thing is those immortal human cells I was talking about, that's cancer. But what happens is some cells in your body become immortal. So they don't stop dividing, they just keep growing, they're living, they're happy, it's a party, it's great, I'm immortal. And then it grows out of control and it creates this big tumor, this cancer in your body. And then since it's a part of you and it's affecting your body, you end up dying. So inevitably it ends up killing itself. So it became immortal and actually made itself die quicker than if it had never become immortal in the first place. That's just one example to where if we figure something out, there might actually be an adverse side effect to where we don't actually live longer or in some tragic cases, we don't live as long. All right guys, I had a lot of fun researching, making this video. I really appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time.